Hey guys, it's Alan from DW again, and welcome back to DW Soundworks. In this video, I'm going to be going over our effects modules in the mixer section of DW Soundworks. We'll cover the EQ, we'll cover the dynamic compressor, the saturators that are available to you, and finally the reverb. Let's jump right in. All right, let's take a look at our effects modules in the mixer in Soundworks. Just to recap, the white button, white knob at the top is going to be your sum samples coming into everything. So I would highly recommend if you want to do specific gain staging like minus 10, say, uh, for your peaks, then you want to do that first with your white knob up here. You want to do that uh, if you're doing your own preset from scratch. So I would come to like the snare drum here, see where I'm hitting. I'm hitting at minus 8. So if I wanted to hit at minus 10, which is my preferred uh, gain structure peaks, uh, I would drop that two at the top, and now I'm at 10 where I want to start. You have a solo and mute knob for this. Uh, as it you know, implies, this is for the entire instrument. So if I hit solo here, you're still hear hearing everything. However, if I hit solo down at the bottom channel strip, it's just the direct, direct mics. Okay? And then you have access to all your mic uh, mixing right here. Uh, it's really uh, intuitive because it just goes straight down uh, the channel instrument, if you will, the strip, right into everything we're about to cover. So I won't talk about routings or direct outs or the main feed uh, because I've already covered that in another video. Uh, you have panning here if you feel the need to tweak as you mix, and then you have the solo mute, as I mentioned, for our direct channel here. So our first button in the effects modules is our phase reversal. Uh, I would recommend against using this button or using uh, in your buses as well. Uh, I would uh, otherwise recommend going into your mic groups if you feel the need to flip a phase, which these have all been checked, so there should not be any need for that. But I would recommend coming in here and doing your comparisons and then uh, changing it in the actual mic group itself as needed. Uh, so that you don't mess with other mics. If you do it at the bus level, obviously it's changing everything and you don't want to do that. So let's look at our next thing. It's our left, uh, left right swap, uh, which generally you're not going to use that on a, a regular channel uh, unless it's like an X-pad, a sample that you added or something like that. You're mainly going to use it for perspective on your main channel uh, if you want to swap the, the drummer's perspective versus uh, studio perspective. Finally, we get to our first effects module of the four. It's EQ. It's a typical uh, British style four band EQ. We have bells on the top and bottom uh, shelves. We have lots of presets we've uh, provided to get you started. They're not perfect. They're just going to be starting points. Uh, so you can load any of these and tweak it to your desire. And then you can come back in here and you can save by clicking this gray uh, button and it will save to your computer wherever you'd like to save your presets. We have a high and low shelf option here if you need to uh, clean up any low end or, or high end or you want to roll something off a little bit more. Uh, to turn the effects modules on or to see them, you can click them like I have here, click off of them to hide them. If you want to turn them on, you can alt click them and you can do either of those with either or uh, in either state, whether they're on or off. Let's move on to our dynamic compressor. Again, you have presets. You can tell this one's a little bit different because, uh, and this is the presets for the dynamic compressor because we have some parallel options here, uh, some natural bus and so forth, so, uh, so on stuff that I've added. So you have presets. We have three different types. We have FET compressor, we have a VCA compressor, and we have a bus compressor. FET is probably what you'll use most of the time. Bus you might use on your buses at the end, uh, or you may use some FET down there as well. Uh, it's really dependent on what you're going for, what type of style and genre. We have an N here for your compressor N, so if you add some volume at your EQ, uh, you can watch what's added. So let's check this here. I should be about 10. And if I go into my EQ and load something up, we're just going to do a uh, snare. Let's just do snare basic. I'll keep this really basic. Turn it on with alt click and then see what that added. The basic one is still at about eight. Let's go with rock. We're still at about eight. So if I wanted to get back to my minus 10 in the compressor, I would just pull this down about two dB. I'm shift clicking, by the way, to fine tune. And now I'm ready to work into my compressor. Of course, you could start with a preset here. I'll go ahead and do snare rock for this one as well. And it's already preset 
uh, alt click to turn it on down here at the bottom and then check our volume again and we're at uh, a little uh, we're about 2 dB high again for the 10 dB uh, gain structure so in this case I could come back up here to my out and I could change that to 10 so for our moment, I'm going to reset this and I'm going to show you what I recommend. What I recommend is coming into your threshold, turning it all the way up. You can choose the ratio if you know what you want or you can just default uh, control click it. Uh, open up the attack if you want, close down the release or add a little bit, 15 milliseconds, whatever you like to do. But what I wanna get to is the transients. I recommend that you go to your transient punch first if you want to add punch to a sample. So if you're doing something that's more rock uh, or metal or what have you, uh, always go to your transients first. It just works much better than trying to go into the compressor first and then add punch afterwards because it really gets chaotic very, very fast. So I have my volumes up so we can hear it. And what I'm gonna do is just start to dial up a little bit of punch to get it, the snare to sound what I want it to sound like. Uh, initially. So here we go. I would just dial that up 2 dB at a time. I'm control clicking or scrolling, I should say. So I'm starting to hear it right there at four. Definitely hearing it there at seven. I'd probably bring it back to maybe six. And I think I would stay there until I get my kit done and then maybe come back through and tweak. So as you add that, now you can come into your threshold and start to bring that down and get the gain uh, reduction that you want. In this case, I'd probably go with something like four. And obviously, obviously it's way loud, so I need to start offsetting that threshold. So I just dialed that down 9 dB, and I was right back where I needed to be at 10. Sustain basically just kind of will clean up the end of your um, sample, your compression, I should say. Uh, so you can use that afterwards if you want to, but the punch I would focus on first. Let's move onward to our saturation. Next knob in the bunch, go ahead and turn it on uh, with our alt click. You have four different types. Obviously you have presets as well, but we have tape, tube, fuzz, and amp. I'm sure most of you will want to use tape or tube most of the time like I do, uh, but you can have some fun with the uh, amp and the fuzz. We have some presets here, so you could just do like a clean tube on this snare drum. Let's get a preset uh, over there to 100 with 50% drive. I usually like to start 50-50 and then dial it in to see what I like. So I'll turn it off right here with my alt and then take a listen, turn it on. And I'm start, yes, I'm starting to hear that saturation kind of in the low end, higher mids. So uh, I'm gonna push the drive up a little bit first. Yep, I'm liking where it's going. Let's try the mix knob up a little bit. That's a bit much, so I'll probably bring both these back to 60. Not bad. I like the wet at 70. Let's try the 60, 70. Not bad. Okay, that's conservative, but it's good to get us started. It's clean tube, just like it says. Uh, you have a bias knob here. You, know, you can add a little bit of high end or, or warm it up, uh, roll it off. So if I want to go up a little bit, a little clarity, maybe bring that back down a little bit. I can do that, or I can warm it up as well if I want to. So it's just really what you want to go for there. I'm going to just leave it at zero for this demonstration. Finally, we have our reverb here. You can click it to see it. Alt click it to turn it on. And uh, we have several different types. We have rooms, eight of them. Chambers, eight of them. Plates, eight of them. Halls, eight of them. Correct. Uh, room five is usually pretty good. Uh, and you have your mix knob here, dry wet, and so we can start that at zero. You have the pre-delay here. If you want to add a little pre-delay, I usually add like maybe 10 milliseconds. Tone uh, on reverbs, I generally don't do any biasing on the tone. So let's turn it off and listen to before, and then turn it on and listen after. And obviously we need to start adding some. So you can do that here. If you're just doing a snare, you can do that here. I would recommend if you're going to do any more than one instrument, send it to Ascend and consolidate your reverb uh, that way. Uh, such as, I, are, I have these sends over here. I don't have anything sending to them. Uh, but you can see I've got some sends here at 100% with a parallel comp and a parallel verb. So if I wanted to turn these on and bring those down to a reasonable level, Come back to the snare. I will turn this reverb off and not use it. Go to my next button, which is the sends. You'll see I already have a send going to one 
and 4. So let's take a listen now. Actually, I'm going to turn down the P comp first. So I still have my reverb. It's a little bit more conservative because I'm controlling it more on the send itself. And you can dial it down here as well if you need to. And then let's turn on our P comp. I'm just control clicking to go straight to zero. So now I'm starting to get some clarity and some punch. May want to bring that back a couple of dB. And there you go. There you have it. That's how our effects modules work. Very, very simple. I didn't do any bus processing on this. I mainly just stuck with the one instrument in this case. But um, you have lots of presets to get you started. They're just starting points. Uh, I totally expect you to just load them and then tweak them. And then you can save them as your own or just commit that to memory and use them uh, accordingly as you build your own presets. Hey, thanks for sticking around. I'm glad you made it this far, and I hope our video helped you. I hope I was able to shine some light on a lot of the features and sound works that will help you get started making your own presets. Please be sure, if you haven't already, to go ahead and subscribe below so that you can get notified of upcoming tutorials. I'm going to have probably several more come out that will help you uh, dig even deeper into sound works. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.